what you want. I, I'm sure that you'll be able to get it. Mm -hmm. Take notes or pictures or whatever. You can read them and so forth like that as well. Right now, I'm trying to kind of ease you into the test taking version. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about the printers. Now, if you have a business, even if it's about print stuff, perimeter. A rectangle. I'm pretty sure you know, but I'm going to go over it anyway. So what I want you to do is, when you take any rectangle, uh, by definition, you know they're 90 degree angles, so they're parallel. And then I'm going to call this uh, parallel. This is also forms a parallel. This also forms a parallel. Do you agree? Okay, so what I'm saying is because these two lines are parallel, I can say that this distance is W is congruent to this distance, right? Those two sides are equal measure, right? Because they're parallel lines. But these are parallel lines too, right? So that must be that this measurement L is congruent to this measurement. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to simply take it apart. I'm going to straighten it out into a line. That's called linear distance. Because you're just measuring down a line. So what, what, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to take uh, this guy, right? I'm going to, I'm going to unhook it, and I'm going to bend it down. So I got this thing here that measures W, correct? Now I straighten it out, and this thing here measures L. I don't think this is supposed to go to that. And then again, I'm going to hit W. I'm just simply straightening it out. Uh, and finally, I have you know, a link. Now that's that's I want you to measure that link. That's how it is. That's perimeter. You would be surprised how many people mix up perimeter with area. Perimeter is the outside of the building. All right. So if I saw if I <laughs> Picture. I want you to make sure that when you add them up, right? I got seven plus seven, correct? Yeah. 
but you need to have the meter. And the meter, when it has a one here, but it's so common we don't do it. If you're going to order rope, pipe, wire, you're going to have the unit in just feet or meters, not square, not two. Okay? So anything, anytime you see something with nothing about it, that is a linear distance. I want to make sure you get the units right. It's meters, and meters, and meters. We're adding. There are seven meters. Not square, but seven meters. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go. You got this now? Okay. Can you tell me? It, it makes sense, doesn't it? It's just straightening it out. Every, yeah. every head, every. <laughs> Now I want you to find the perimeter of this. Uh -huh. Now, supposing you have, you need to find a set of fence around some kind of circular thing. I want you to disconnect it exactly what we did, and I want you to straighten it out. Okay, and this is the distance I want to know. We're going to call it perimeter. And the perimeter for a circle, they call it circumference. Get this down because circumference is simply the perimeter of a circle. I don't know why they just don't call it perimeter, but for a circle, they call it perimeter. Perimeter is a square rectangle. <coughs> Unhook it, lay it out, and I want to show you how it to figure it out, not, not just give you an equation. I want you to see how it figures out. Yeah, okay, so the Egyptians and then the Greeks realized that you stick at one point, just one point, and you find a distance, right? To here, which we're going to call R, is the distance to that. And if you get every point that's equal distance from R, that forms a circle. That's how they argued in the Greek uh, mathematics that it's the loci of all points. They call it loci of all points that are equal distance from a center point. That is a circle. Okay? So now, how would we go about measuring the distance, which is linear distance, of the distance around the circle? And this is how it's done. Let me show you how to derive it. This is a deeper kind of learning because I'm actually explaining where it comes from. And in this case, this is something that I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that is true, but it, you can try it for yourself. Any circle, if it's a planet or it's a, a microbe circle size, it will always be, if you take this right here, you agree that because all points are equal, this must be R as well. Anything that you draw to the edge is going to be R, correct? Okay, so they have a definition that they call a diameter. I'm just going to put diameter. Now I'll put the diameter. Okay, and what it equals is R plus R. R plus R is the diameter. That's what I call this distance. A, a point, any line that goes through the center to the other line is a diameter. So how can I say, well, R plus R is 2R, because you're combining like R. You're combining two terms, correct? And, and this is what happens. It turns out in all cases that if you take a string or a wire or whatever, the distance of D, that distance will go like this. That will be a D in distance. Then this will go around. A D in difference in it. Be in distance, you understand? And it will go, but it always falls short. That, that really irritated early mathematicians that why can't I get a number that can close the loop? So if I take it, I already know that this is pretty close to what? D plus D plus D. That's the same that I can say that the circumference is similar to three times D. Three D. Why? I told you it takes three strings to get around. But it's a little bit shorter. 
That's why my equal sign is kind of intercostable. And over time, finally, they discovered that if you want to make it as exact as possible, you have to change this, make it an equal sign, and we're going to change the three to five times e. Now, now you can see that you know three times e almost gets you there, so you can expect that pi is pretty close to three. It's three point one four, and it goes forever. But for calculation purposes, let's just call pi three point one four. Pi, pi is really like, if you, if you see, this is approximate because I use three. But pi gets you a much more accurate distance perimeter of the circle. Now, I know that D, if you look here, I know that D, you can call it R plus R, or you can call it 2R. Correct? So you can call me D, or you can call me 2R, I don't mind. It says D is equal to 2R. Using substitution, now I want you to do this. I'm going to substitute instead of D, I'm going to put 2R. You got it? You sure? Yes. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to take pi, and instead of D, I'm going to put what it is 2R. That's pi times 2 times R. That's actually pretty close to 3, that's like 6. Close to 6. And then multiply times R, and you got the distance. Because that circum that, that that diameter went one, two, and it was a little bit short. What closes the gap is pi. Okay, now the way you actually see it in books and textbooks, this is perfectly correct. But multiplication, if I take one times two times three, it's the same as three times two times one. That's called the commutative property of multiplication. So this is how you see it. They just change the order. They put the two in the front. They put pi here, and that's the same as circumference. That is a perimeter of a circle. So if I tell you that this is two meters, you know you know that that's two times two, and pretty much times three. But instead of three, use three point one four. You understand? That is the distance around the circle. Now you know the perimeter around a square, and you know why this equation, where it comes from. It's simply 3D, and just a hair more than 3D. And that, actually, this took a long time to discover. And it pops up over and over in nature. We, we, we're not sure why. It's something that's almost like a program. Okay, everybody got it? So now, if I say that it's, if I'm telling you two meters, I expect you to say, you know, you're going to take two times uh, 3.14, so it'd be like 6.28. You see, I just multiplied these two. Now, if I say this is two meters, I want you to multiply, you know, R is two meters, and I want to see that this is going to be what, 12, and then twice that, like 56. So 12.56, and I want you to show me that it's in meters. <laughs> that's it, that's problem number one. Uh, at least one, one perimeter of a rectangle and one perimeter of a circle. Problem number two. Any questions on it? No. Sure? This is, I hope that you kind of get an intuitive feeling why it's true. Why is it, where does it come from? Okay, second question. And back to the square, okay. or rectangle. It could be a square or a rectangle. We agreed that W, the congruency of size is this and this. Is. Well, I don't even need that. Let me get rid of that. Okay, and this is L. Now, I want you to understand, this is why I did earlier. If I had one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, and five, one, two, three, four, and five. And I ask you how many of it, I sure, I'm sure that you can count them like this. But you don't have to. I think you know by now that you can take three times five, right? And why three times five? Because what does three times five mean? It means three sets of five added up. So that's why it works. Now, that's 15, do you agree? 
in order to understand that every time I'm calculating area of a square, it's always going to be as though you're counting points. Because if I take a hammer and, and, and then uh, uh, like some scientists cut it, I can actually spread it out and then I make like stamps. And this is why it works also for area. Look at the title on the board. How do you know how much tile you need? Okay, well, we're going to find the area. Or uh, you need to uh, multiply numbers. What's that? You multiply This is the reason I'm saying that this is going to be. I mean, per feet. If you're in feet, yeah. If you're in meters, right? Well, he said square, that's the feet. So I'm telling you, this is how easy it is. The area of all, re all rectangles. Just make W times L. Why? Because it's the same way you would add up points oh, without counting them individually. With and length, right? But what I want you to know is the same concept of trying to figure out how many points there are in the matrix. Is it okay? Yeah. All right. So let's try it. So if I call this three meters and I call this four meters, what I expect to see on the test is yes, it's multiplied. Three times four is twelve, but as far as I'm concerned, it's not complete until you multiply meters times meters. Meters times meters means two thousand meters. That means meters squared. So when you go to order pile or you're going to order carpet, they want to know this. Don't tell them twelve meters because that's a line. Or you can just tell them you know like twelve hundred square feet. Yeah, well you're telling square. They expect to see it. Whatever unit is square. So when you tell them I need 14 yards, square yards, but you're not going to tell them you want 14 yards because that's a straight measurement. You get it? There's no width. There's no width. Well, actually, you did. You added width plus length plus width plus length for the perimeter. So for area, it's, it's just this Why? Because it's the same as the way you counted all the points. This times this gave you the, all the points inside. If you call, change those points to like tile, that tells you how many individual square tiles you will need, like whatever measurement you're at. Feet, meters, okay? Mm -hmm. That's it. Can you do that? That's problem number two. So you see what I'm doing? I'm doing the linear distance of a rectangle, spreading it out. I'm doing the area. I'm just counting up the number of dots by I know multiplying will give me that. And I maintain my meter so that I got me a square. Is there any question on this? No. I, you need to know this if you're in the system. You go to the university and then. Okay. Now, the end of the next problem. The question I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, Alternate. What is it? Alternate. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, okay, so wholesaling. Um, can I do that? No, you, you don't think so? Yeah. But I see people that are like, they say, oh, when you put it, you can start doing wholesaling. How does that work? No, let's, let, well, wholesale means that if you're a wholesaler, you're buying it straight from the factory, let's say, as a product. Uh -huh. Okay. But you could be, if you're a wholesaler, you're buying it straight from the factory, let's say, as a product. So you could be ordering. Uh, I know those Jewish people that get the, the girls, and maybe guys, I don't know. You know how girls curl their hair with a, like a burner, mm -hmm. like a roller? Yeah. So they went to China and they, they put these like leopard spots on them to make it look kind of cool. And they were buying them for roughly about $50. Mm -hmm. Those people were reselling it at the shopping center the mall oh, for, yeah. for 250 yeah. Well, I mean, stop it. So, so this is a wholesaler. They're the ones that either come and they, don't, they get it straight from the factory. They pay for freight. They keep it in inventory. And this is retail. That's what they're selling it to the customer. This is a wholesaler. This is a retailer. When you step into a store, you're in a retail if you could. Yeah. But if you go to some place like Purdue, you know, make a deal with them. The difference between here and here is like your profit. Profit. 
Now, you might call it a scam. I don't know. It's a middleman. Yeah. Wholesaler is a middleman. Absolutely. It's so everything. There's a thing, there's a, there's a, a joke. It's, it's, uh, it's a joke. It says a lot of the uh, Jewish people, they tend to be the middle people. So the story goes is, um, you know, uh, if you're not Jewish, you're a Gentile. Okay. If you're not Christian, you'd be a he like a heathen. If you're not um, part of Islam, then you're an infidel. Who's ever not part of the club is something else. So whoever's not Jewish, you might as well learn the term is called a Gentile. You are all, I think, unless you're Jewish, you're Gentiles. The joke though is, uh, why did God invent Gentiles? The answer to the joke is just because somebody had to buy retail. And can they they not they don't buy retail. No. They're wholesaling, they're always just middle guys. And now the wholesale furniture uh, property is okay, so there's there's these there's these property going in foreclosures, right? They're gonna be property uh, homes. There's some big companies that go to the bank and says, I'll buy all of those bad loans. Now they, you know, they be, and then they're going to resell it. That would be kind of a wholesale of property. Well, then I think that makes sense. Like, maybe in this case, for example, why is it for like companies that are Zillow or something, or more companies or something, that I see a bandit, I go and I, I ask a, a homeowner, and if the home is for sale, and then me as a wholesaler says, or so it helps the uh, the real estate agent get the home, something like that. Well, that's that's more. I don't know if you're the middleman so much there, but if you bought in volume, property in volume, you're expected to get a discount. The bank will discount because you're buying all their bad loans. So in essence, you're controlling all of those properties. So, and then you can flip it, fix them up a little or whatever, and then resell it. I would call that. Wholesaler of property. I don't know not to buy it and to flip it. Is, yeah. you know, if you can buy an old, older, let's say, a house that's abused, that's, and you can fix it, yeah, you could be considered like a wholesaler because then you're going to sell it to the retail market. Okay. What I was telling you, what you should do, though, if you're not if you're not set up with credit, is try to find a seller who will finance it for you. So instead of making payments. The bank, you're making payments to him, but you own title. So what you do is like I, with some of the people that I know that are flippers, I make a deal for seller financing. So they don't have to pay for all the house up front. They might put some percentage down, but, but the rest is monthly payments, and it only takes them a year to finish or less. And they, and they sell it, they pay off the loan. So you've already had any money in at all. That's the way to do it. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what sale and retail. It's a good question. I never thought about that. But now I want you to find the area of this. Okay. And you know that there's a, a point here. And you know that's for you. But I'm not asking for the business. I don't want you to unwrap it. I want to know the area, like I wanted to know the area of a rectangle. Okay. okay. You look good. Okay. Here we go. We got it like this. Okay. Now, how am I going to, I'm going to show you how motivated, like I did with the 3D, okay? Here we go. And I've showed you this before, I'm pretty sure. This is a diameter, right? This is a diameter. And if you want to think about it, like slices of pizza. Okay, the thinner the slices, the more accurate it's going to be. But I'm going to call that one, two, three, four, and five. And I'll call it six. Now, you know that this distance is radius, right? So the side, this is a piece of pizza, right? So that side of the pizza is R. Okay, so I'm simply going to reorganize it so that I put my, my first piece of pizza like this. This is crowded. Okay, this is crowded. With sub G. And this is 
Christ. And this is Christ. And this is Christ. So we got one, two, three, four, five, and how many? One, six. Okay. Now, do you remember how to find area of a square or a rectangle? It's this times this. What did I do? I'm converting a, a, I'm trying to, a mathematician is trying to convert it to something that I already know how to calculate. Two more? Okay, so this is R, right? From here, do you agree? Do you agree? Okay. So now I have to figure out the distance of the crust. What is the equation? What is the equation for the whole distance? What is the equation for the whole distance around the perimeter of the circle? I call it P with what? I just gave it to you. What is the linear distance around the circle? What is the equation? Two, five, and R. I derived that for you. But I hope that you understand that this crust plus this crust plus this crust is only half of the circle. The crust goes all the way around, but this is the crust for one, this is the crust for three, and this is the crust for five. If you put those together, it's half a pizza crust. It's half of a pizza crust. No need to So I'm going to take half of this distance. I'm going to take the crust divided by two, and I'll take this and divide it by two. So half a crust is equal to pi r. Right? And so now I know what this distance is. Five times R. So once you know R, you can find the circle of any area of any circle. So the same thing is that the area, right? It's all same as the so often. It's just like a rectangle. A circle now, I'm converting it into a rectangle. So guess what it is? It's going to be R times R. It's going to be pi R times R next to two properties of R. That is the same as the equation for the area. But I'm trying to tell you that where it comes from is that I'm trying to make it into a correct hand. And I hope that you see if I make more and more spinner cycles, you see that? That this is turning more and more into an abstract correct hand. This, for me, is better than video games. This is like, ah, oh. ratio. Well, uh, you want to take the hat off? The hood is off. The hood. There you go. Pictures, the principal comes by. That's what the hell I have. Uh, but I hate it when he comes in. He says, you, you, you. I know, he's annoying, Mr. We know. We understand you, Mr. So here's the area, okay? Now I'm going to give you a problem. This is the problem. I'm going to say R is 2 meters. So what is the area of the circle? Look how easy it is. I know that pi is pretty close to three, correct? So I have something that what you're going to use for pi is 3.114. We'll use that as a it goes forever actually. So and then I know what r is now, right? It's two meters, correct? I'm going to square it. That means times itself. It does not mean add, it means two times two and meters times meters. So if I take this is 3.147, if I multiply that times 2, you can see that that's going to be 6.28 for you. But be careful because it's squared, so it means that's not. It's not 2 because it's going to be 3.14, but then I have two copies, right? 2m, sorry, 2m times 2m is what that means, two copies of m. I mean, just multiply it. That's four, right? And m times m is two. There's your squared. That's why squares, anytime you see it, whether it's a rectangle or a circle, it's talking about area. So I would take 3.4, right? 3.14, multiply it, multiply it times four. And then don't forget you have the squared. And that's how you do it. I mean, you want to take the way I multiply it. It's pretty sloppy, but if 
I, what I do is I pretend like it's 314. So I say 300, right? And then uh, on the unit 10, I have uh, one unit of 10, right? And then I have four units of one. You agree that that adds up to 314, right? Yeah. I'm not worried about the decimal right now. Then I'm going to multiply that quantity by four. Let me rewrite that. Okay, so the area is going to be Okay, and then R squared will be two meters times two meters. That will be multiplied times four, uh, four meters, four squared, four is squared already, and then meters squared. That, that, that's two times two is four. And meters times meters is what I want you to understand because all of you can multiply four times two times four. The way I do it, I just multiply by four here. And that's the distribution. But that may make more sense for multiplication instead of bottom and carrying. So four times tells that four times 10 is 40. And four times four is 16. So six, five, two, one. Okay? And it's obviously it's not that big, so it's going to be something like that. F1, 2, 5, 6. Right? Yeah. So the F1, 2, 5, 6, right? So I know that it's, it's not 1,256 meters squared. So if you multiply it out, you'll see that it's going to be 12.5 meters squared. That's how you decide how much time you need in a circle. Can I make it? And there's your test. Those are two. Oh, uh, there's two sets. I want you to find an area of a square, rectangle, area of a circle. I want you to find an area of a square. And you know exactly what's going to be on. I'm just going to change these numbers. But for me, it's important that you get your units correct, whether it's just meters or meters squared. <laughs> Yeah. What's your last name? Chavez. And I don't want to say anything because you're a teacher. Rosa? Yeah. Got you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.